Hi, this is a video to help you complete the Chapter 9 Cost of Capital spreadsheet assignment. So this video will reinforce the main formulas from the Chapter 9. Now, first thing we want to look at is the cost of equity using the dividend growth formula. So I have to find P0. So I just use this formula here, which would be D1 divided by R minus G, close parentheses. And we want to convert this to a number. Okay, so this P to zero is the stock price. So using next year's dividend and the uh, required rate of return on the stock and the growth rate of the dividend, we could calculate the stock price. Now, what if we wanted to calculate the the rate of the rate for the, the required rate of return for cost of equity on stock. Well, in this case, we have D1, P0, and the growth rate. And you notice how these numbers are similar up here. We could take, we could use algebra to mix the formula around and we could say D1 divided by P0 plus G. But don't forget your parentheses. Otherwise it won't work and we get 13%. You see how this is the same number up here? So in problems in the homework, you may encounter problems where looking for you to calculate the stock price based on the cost and growth model or calculate the uh, rate of return based on the co cost and growth model. So you could use e these the same model, just reformulated to solve for R, this solves for P. Okay, now you may have a situation where, what if it's new equity? So N to the N. So the cost of new equity, um, we'll say, is greater than can be, you know, could be greater, or actually no, the cost of new, yeah, the cost of new equity um, is usually greater than the cost of common equity uh, because of the flotation costs involved. But in this particular example, we're going to um, just follow the formula, and again, we want to take D one divided by n plus g okay so 12.77 uh, percent now if this if this result was related to this result here the actual net proceeds would which should be lower because we would want to see r being higher but these two examples here even though they share similar numbers are not for the same company or the same stock so okay all right, so the key thing is on the homework, when you see questions like issuing new stock, then you know cost of new stock formula you wanna use. Issuing existing stock, then we would use the, just the cost of equity formula. All right. Now, we could also use the uh, cost of equity formula, uh, the capital asset pricing model as uh, another formula for calculating the cost of equity, specifically for stocks that don't have any dividends. So to calculate the car, the, um, the required rate of return, or R to the S, we would just follow the same formula that we learned in the previous chapter, and we would take the, the risk-free rate, and we're going to add that to the beta, multiplied by the market return minus the risk-free rate. And we get our, our cost of capital related to um, the capital asset pricing model. So this is a good formula to use. And generally in the homework, you'll know to use this formula when they start giving you a beta or a market return or risk-free rate. That would be all signals to use the capital asset pricing model, especially if they're not giving you any dividends. So these four models right here are for calculating the cost of equity. So the cost of equity using the dividend growth model, we could calculate the stock price or the rate, actually we could calculate any of these value, values, G, R, D1, or P0, based on modifying this formula using algebra. And that's what we did down here to calculate the rate. Now, if it's new stock, the cost of new stock, we just need to know what uh, N to the N is. And this would be the net proceeds of issuing new stock minus the flotation costs or any discounts that we have to sell it at uh, under the current stock price. All right. so. Let's look at cost of debt. So cost of debt, if we have the debt 
percentage. This is also sometimes known in the homework as yield to maturity. So don't let that confuse you. And what we want to do here is we want to find the after tax cost of debt. So what we do is we take the uh, cost of debt and we multiply that by one minus the tax rate. And that's how we calculate our after tax cost of debt. Now there's another type of stock that is a hybrid stock between stock and bonds and it's called cost of preferred stock. So cost of preferred stock uh, is the simplest of all formulas. We just take the dividend and divide by the net proceeds. Easiest of all formulas. And preferred stock is basically a stock that's guaranteed to pay a dividend and to pay that dividend before common shareholders receive it. Okay, so now that we have all those calculated, we can learn how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. So here's the formula from the textbook, and it's the weights times the rates plus the weights times the rates. So um, what we're going to do here is we have our dollar amounts for each of stock, bond, and preferred stock, and the total capital. So to get our weights, we just have to take the total and divide by the individual. Sorry, the individual and divide by the total. That makes more sense. The individual, divide by the total, and the individual share of preferred stock, divide by the total pool of capital, and we get our percentages. And together, these three percentages are gonna equal 100%. Remember I told you in a previous video that if any cells you highlight down here will give you the average, the count, and the sum. So here are the rates, and these are rates uh, for each of the stocks. And we simply just take the, the weight times the rate for each stock. And we bring this down, so. And then we just find the sum of these cells and this would be our weighted average cost of capital. Simple as that. And then you can do this bottom one yourself. So this is um, a rather quick uh, spreadsheet, not as complicated as some of our other spreadsheets, but this is really just to reinforce the formulas in, in the cost of capital. So here, to recap, we looked at all the various sources of equity, debt, preferred stock, and also how to utilize these sources of capital to calculate a weighted average cost of capital. So now it's your turn. Go into the Blackboard, download this uh, spreadsheet and complete it and submit it to assignments. Thank you and I'll see you again next time. On the other workbook, you'll notice a tab called uh, Growth Rate. So I noticed that in the homework they have, uh, they have a question that centers around calculating G or the growth rate. And what they do is they give you the dividend for 2011 to 2015. Now, what makes this problem hard to solve in Excel is you have to know a couple things. One, 2011 is considered year zero. And then uh, one, two, three, and four. So N per ends at four. So that I put there. And then to calculate the growth rate, what we want to do, going back to chapter five, time value money, we calculated growth, we calculated rates of interest using the rate function. So if you go to formulas, insert function, and you use rate, remember this formula? So here we would use n per, which is four. Payment would be zero. We don't have payment. Present value would be 2.15 or the year zero value. And make sure that this is a negative value. They'll express it to you as a positive value, but for Excel, you have to have a negative sign in front of it to use it. And then the future value would be the 2015 dividend just leave type blank and hit OK. And then you'll get the 10.02%, 10, 10 which would be the growth rate. Now, in order for me to check it, what I did to check it is I basically said, I'm going to take and it take year zero, but I'm going to multiply by negative one so I can make it a positive again. And then I'm going to multiply that by um, one plus the growth rate that we calculated to the power of n4. And this is basically the future value formula. So I'm using the future value formula just to double check and I see that if going from 215 to 315 using a rate of 10, uh, escalating 215 at a rate of growth rate of 10.2% of does get me to 315 in period four. Okay, so um, again, if you're gonna do that, you 
when you see this in the homework problem, they'll give you a set of numbers, but um, make sure that you resequence them so that the first one is a negative number. So let me see if I can find an example. Okay, so here's an example from the book, not from the book, from the homework, where it's gonna ask you to grow the, uh, the growth rate and dividends from 2011 to 2015, it'll give you this information. So you can come back to my spreadsheet here and you can type in the information. So for the first year 11, make sure it's a negative 2.04. And then we'll put 216, 2.49, 2.71, and 2.95. Okay, so that is, these would be, so I'm just copying the dividend share information here. And I use that same formula here um, where I put in A2 right here, which is four, very important, four would be the end part because 2011 is a zero year. Payment is zero, present value is C6, but make sure it's a negative, Put in, so you just convert this to a negative. And then future value is 2015 or 295. And that will give me a uh, 9.66. So if I put that in here, 9.66, I'm correct, yay. Okay, so just want to show you that because that homework problem, sometimes you, some students find that a little um, confusing, oops hide my desktop there. Uh, okay, so I hope this helped as far as how you calculate growth rates uh, for chapter nine. Okay, thank you.